The only man that ever lived without rejection is Jesus Christ. I make bold to tell you that Jesus is the only man that ever lived without rejection because Jesus existed in relationship with the Heavenly Father. Jesus knew the Father. Jesus trusted the Father. Jesus depended on the, on the Father. And um, he had the voice of the Father. He had the love of the Father. He was in relationship with the Father. So Jesus had nothing like rejection. Very powerful. We are looking at the root of rejection, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will give us understanding. Pray that uh, we will have uh, insight into the Word of God. I pray that there will be healing. You will be free from rejection. Father in heaven, thank you for the entrance of your work. Give light and understanding to the people. Thank you, Holy Spirit, the great teacher, as you take us through the Word of God. Amen. Amen. I repeat myself quickly. The only man that ever lived without rejection, without any copless problem, is Jesus Christ. He was not born into it. He was not born with it. He knew his father. He had the voice of his father. He had the father's love. He was validated by the father. He was uh, loved by the father he knew the voice of the father so there was nothing like rejection jesus had no problem with rejection there was nothing like that at all because jesus knew the father so rejection is traceable to is traceable to the first uh, the first man created by god the first man is adam that is where we take uh, with that where, uh, that's where rejection started from okay Rejection is traceable to the Garden of Eden. When God gave Adam instruction, God told Adam what to do and what not to do. Good day, good day dear sister Clarice. God told Adam what to do and what not to do. God instructed Adam he should not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But Adam listened to the wife instead of listening to the, to the father, instead of obeying what the father told him. Adam decided to listen to the wife. This is where problems started from. From the time of Adam, man had always had problem with rejection. You know, when Adam ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, he disconnected himself from, from his source. God the Father <laughs> was the source of Adam. God the Father was the source of joy, the source of peace. The source of happiness, the source of, source of satisfaction, the source of fulfillment. So, when Adam disconnected himself from God the Father, Adam became desolate. Adam became bereaved. Adam became comfortless. This is where rejection started from. This is where it started from. So, it's not about society. It's not about society, like I've been saying. Society cannot give identity. What we lost in Adam cannot be given by society. Cannot be given by by school, cannot be given by any organization. It can only be given when you can only get it back when you return back to the Father. So here is the scripture for Adam. Okay, we're going to read this. Adam rejected the Father's love, the Father's presence, and fellowship with the Father when he ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And uh, the Father sent him out of his presence. <laughs> you remember that account very well. The, by by eating the 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 tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam rejected the father's love. He rejected the father's presence and fellowship. The account in the Bible tells us in verse eight, and um, okay, let's take from verse six. So when so when when the woman saw that the tree of good, the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise. She took of his fruit and ate. Okay, she also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. We are reading from Genesis chapter three, verse eight. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The faith, faith was replaced by fear because he, God would eventually asked Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam said, well, I'm afraid. 
I heard the sound of I heard your son in the garden and I was afraid I hid myself. So this is how rejection started. When Adam became bereaved, Adam became desolate, Adam became uh, comfortless, Adam hid himself from the presence of God. So because the father was no longer in the life of Adam, there was no longer fellowship, Adam you know, lost it. So rejection is as a result of not having the father's presence, the father's love, the father's uh, um, blessing basically. It starts with the Heavenly Father, then down to the biological father. So before you get to the place of the family rejection, which is the most common uh, account we know, or the, the story we know about rejection, before we get to the family rejection, there is the rejection that that, uh, that is spiritual. Okay, the rejection that is as a result of not having relationship with the Father. God bless you, dear sister, Pastor Rose. There's a, there is that one. That is actually the starting point. That is where it starts from. Not having a relationship with the Father. So hiding from the presence of the Lord is a clear message of rejection of fellowship. That Adam and Eve hid from the presence of the Lord. This is what rejection does. It makes you hide. It makes you shift blame. It makes you run. You hide from people. You run from people. You shift blame. Rejection is a terrible disease. <laughs> Rejection is a terrible disease. You hide, you run, you shift blame. You, I take it again, you hide from people, you hide from places, you run from people, you shift blame. That is what exactly what Adam did. We learned this from Adam. So if you look at the Bible, you see from this, from the time in the garden, if you now go to the book of Numbers chapter 14, you see God himself speaking against rejection. He's speaking, God speaking against rejection because God himself, God himself does not like being rejected. God knows that rejection is not good for, for human. God does not like being rejected. He created man for himself. So when, when man rejects God, it's, it, you, you don't accept God is who he says he is. That is what we are looking at here. You don't accept that God is your source. As more of our, let's look at the name Father. You know, I said that the Father is who He says He is. He's your provider, He's your healer, He's your source, basically. I like the word source. The source there simply means God is your everything. God is your life. The Father is your everything. The Father is the source of your happiness, source of your source of life, source of uh, um, anything you can think of as a matter of fact. So when you don't recognize the Father as source, you reject Him. You, st you are simply say you are not who you say who you said you are, and that is a problem of the society. The society today, anywhere, any society, look at it. Whether it is America, whether it is Great Britain, whether it is Africa, look at it. The problem is society is fatherless and does not want to admit that it is fatherless, not recognizing God. As a father of, uh, or as a source of happiness, source of joy, source of security, source of, source of peace, simply means we want to do things by ourselves, and that amounts to one thing: dysfunctionality, and to take us to a place of lawlessness, anarchy, all of these things, because we refuse to acknowledge that the source of joy, the source of peace, the source of security. Is the father he created all for himself? Okay. So he does not like being rejected. If you reject him as the father, you are simply not going to have joy, peace, security, all of these things that we get from the father. No government can secure people, <laughs> it's all a lie. We see that no, no, it's part of uh, everything that America has. America cannot secure its people, it's not possible. No government can give protection, can give security, no government, it is only the Father, because it's the source, it's the source. In the midst of what is happening in America, all other nations of the earth, you see the believers, we are protected. Somehow, we just know that our Father will take care of us, that is what I'm talking about here. So, Numbers chapter 14, from verse 1 to 4, it reads, 
So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt. This under 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 insight about rejection, under under revelation. If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land? To fall by the sword. They are accusing the Lord that our wives and children should become victims. You can you can hear that. Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, Let us select a leader and return to Egypt. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 to 4. This is rejection. This is the nation of Israel rejecting God as the Father, rejecting God as source of security, as their provider. So they said to themselves, we are self-sufficient. We have what it takes to take care of ourselves. We have what it takes. We don't even need you, Moses, to be our leader. We should just select a leader and return to Egypt. Let's return to bondage. This is what nations are doing. Nations have rejected the Father as a source of peace, source of security, source as a provider. And now there is problem everywhere problem everywhere because the father is rejected and the father wants us to return to him the gospel is about our father jesus came to bring us into our father we cannot reject the father and we expect peace we expect security we expect provision that everything will go well with us nope nothing will work so let us select a leader and return to egypt simply means we reject your leadership, Moses. By that, we reject God who sent you to us. We don't want, we don't want to have to do with him any longer. It was a vote of no confidence. Vote of no confidence. So, they rejected the leadership of God over the nation. Then, you are going to hear, you are going to hear God speaking for himself now. See, we can fix the problem of uh, nations. We can. The church, it is very easy. Let's return to the Father. Then let's fix fatherhood. Let's fix fatherhood. Let's get the men, bring them to place of alignment to the purposes of the Father so that men will take their place, being able to represent the Father accurately to, to families, to, 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 to society. By that, you will see that things will just change miraculously for nations. We can fix the problem. United Nations cannot fix it. It is not possible. No, no, call all the bodies. UNESCO, United Nations, they cannot fix it. Child trafficking, uh, prostitution, drugs. No, we have the solution. All we need to do is to bring the nation back into alignment. Let's see the Father as our source, source of peace, source of, of uh, protection, security, joy. You don't find it in drugs. Drug addicts, they know. They do not find it. Pedophile, they have not found They've not found what they are looking for. They've not found this. Uh, the, those who, uh, he says, those who sleep with their children, they have not found what they are looking for. Those who are into, uh, who are who are violating their conscious sexual perversion, they've not found what they are looking for. They are still searching. So people are searching for what will make them happy, what will, what will make them joyful. So they go about messing up their body all in the name of trying to get identity. They want to belong. But they've not even found this thing. They've not even found this thing. This is the cry of the nations. Nations are crying for Father. They are crying for, for, for source. source. They want, people want to be happy. They want to be joyful. They want, uh, they want identity. So for those, I don't mean to be rude. I don't mean to be rude. For those who will tattoo their body, all because they want identity. So the more they get this thing, the more they find out that, oh man, I need to get more tattoo. Because they are still look searching for something. Then what about sex? Those who are there, who cannot be satisfied or they, they just mess up their whole life, turn their life upside down in marriage. You cannot be satisfied with your spouse. It is because something is missing on the inside. There is emptiness on the inside. And the father, who is the source, is the only one who can take care of that vacuum, that emptiness on the inside. So we go to Numbers 14, verse, verse 11 and 12. Here what we have there. Then the Lord said to Moses, 
How long will these people reject me? Did you hear that? So you can hear the word reject now. How long will these people reject me? And how long will they not believe me? With all the signs which are performed among them, I will strike them with the pestilence and disherit them. And I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. So here is God speaking for himself. How long will these people reject me? God does not like being rejected. He wants to be the source of the nation. He wants to be the source of the nation, the source of happiness. I keep repeating myself, joy, security, protection. Nations are built amnition. They are built all kind of things, whatever name they call them, because they want to secure their borders, secure their people. <laughs> that does not solve the problem. That will not solve the problem. We are doing, they are doing all of this because of fear. But when we see God as our source, source of protection, security, we will overcome fear. We no longer live in fear. Fear of Satan, fear of any, fear of people. Okay. Then there's something else to, to look at here. So God was the Lord was displeased basically because the Israelites rejected him. He was displeased. You can hear it, you can hear the tone. So the Lord decided to reject them also. I will strike them with, with pestilence and disherit them. Did you hear that? I will disherit them. So that is God saying, I don't want having to do with them again. I want to raise a new nation for you, Moses. Let's, let's listen to verse 20 and 23. We are reading from Numbers 14. Then the Lord said, I pardon according to your word, but truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. Because all these men who have seen my glory and the signs which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have put me to the test. Now these ten times, ten times God has his record, okay? He has his record, ten times. And I have not heeded my voice. They certainly shall not see the land of which I swore to their fathers, nor shall any of those who rejected me see it. So God, the Lord is emphasizing the word rejection here. The problem of nation Africa Europe, America is the rejection of the Father. It's a rejection that nations have refused to acknowledge God, the God the Father. I like that name, God the Father, as a source. This is a problem of man. So man wants to, to have satisfaction outside the source. And anything you want to get outside the source is counterfeit. Counterfeit, and it's coming from the devil. It's coming from the devil, and the devil will never give you what will make what will give you true, true happiness or true joy, peace, security. He will never do that. He will never. So we read from uh, 34 now, 34, 35. We are still reading from Numbers. Oh dear Jesus, have mercy. According to the numbers of the days in which you spied out, out the land, 40 days for each day you shall bear your guilt one year. 40 days for 14 days years of punishment and you shall know my rejection this is God you shall know my rejection I the Lord have spoken this how we shall it do to all these evil congregation who have who have gathered together against me in this wilderness they shall be consumed and they shall die so rejection is not because uh, your dad your dad has refused to love you your mom has refused to love you the first source the first root is father god then your parents who did not know the heavenly father as the source only had to do what is it natural for them to do because they did not know the father the father is the source of love is the source of peace source of security so your parents did not receive love, love from the Heavenly Father. They did not receive affirmation. They did not receive uh, 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 joy from the Father. So they could not give that to you. They could not give it to you because they did not receive that. So it, it was just natural for them to, to treat you as a wanted uh, child. They could not love you the way you, you had wanted to be loved. They could not celebrate you. They could not appreciate who you are, your talents, your, your, your gift, potentials. Because they did not see God, the Father, as a source. As a source. So we blame our parents. We attack our parents. We attack our families. We reject our families. We run away from our families. Because we feel we were rejected by them. But the truth is, 
the problem started when our parents, your parents, did not see God the Father as the source. Are you understanding this? Good. So they did not see God the Father as the source. They rejected the Father. It's a problem that can only be dealt with when we come into alignment with Him. We relate with God as the Father. The Father. That is when this problem is dealt with. So family rejection. Being rejected by friends. Be rejected by the church. Be rejected by your pastor. Be rejected by a friend or your community. Don't allow this to, to ruin your life. Don't allow this to make you miserable. Don't allow this to imprison you. Okay? You can simply see beyond this. I have come to realize that everything, everything that I've been through in life, it is uh, meant to bring me to my Father in heaven. Everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. <laughs> everything that I've been through in life is meant to bring me to my Heavenly Father. And I'm glad that I'm knowing my Father today. Okay, This is uh, there's a scripture like that, though I don't know exactly where it is, where David said, oh, it's Psalm 119, that he's happy that he was afflicted, that through his affliction, he has come to learn his lesson. That is where I paraphrase it. If, if the Holy Spirit would just help me to know where it is exactly, I would be so happy. So David made a statement like that, that, oh, that he's happy that he was afflicted, and through his affliction, he has come to know that uh, God indeed is a good father. Well, I don't, I don't really have that. Then another scripture is about uh, the goodness of God. That the goodness of God leads to repentance, prosperity, good health, good marriage, good family. Your business is doing well. Everything Bible says leads to repentance. Everything is to lead you to repentance, to appreciate the Father that is indeed is a good Father. So what about rejection you've been through? Not being loved by your family. You were battered in your marriage. Your husband, your spouse took advantage of you. You went to hell in your marriage. You are, you are, you are still alive. Hey, this whole thing is to bring you to where you can now look up to your Heavenly Father and say, Thank you, Father. I went through all this, rejected. Now I can feel the acceptance of my Heavenly Father. Rejected by the church. If the church, it brings you to where you appreciate that indeed God is your Father, not church. Not church. Sometimes we look onto we look onto church for love. You look to the church for love, for acceptance. You want to be loved by the church. And you blame the church. You fight the church. You try to attack the church. Don't do that. Don't do that. Instead of that, instead of doing such a thing, look unto the Father. The Father would always come to whoever he wants to come to to show you love. If he's not coming through the, your pastor, coming through a, a member in the church, if he chooses to come to another person, please do open your heart and receive the love, the Father's love. Sometimes when we talk about the Father's love, one thing we have to we have to know, acknowledge, is that the Father comes through people to show us love. Okay, so we're going to stop here. I haven't been able to see that the problem of the society is simply the rejection of the father rejection of the father as a source source of the well-being of society source of peace security source of satisfaction this is the problem and it is the problem of the family so let's return to the father if you feel rejected this moment by the church by a friend by your dad your biological father your some father figure your mother it is time for you to forgive them forgive them for they do not know what they've done to you. <laughs> Forgive them, please. Forgive them because the truth of the, the truth is this: they have actually rejected the source. They have not received from the source, so they have nothing to give you. They have not received the Father's love, the Father's presence, the Father's uh, blessing. So they have nothing to give to you. They only they gave you the beastly nature, the nature of the fallen man, the Adamic nature. That's what they have: hunger, pride. Uh, all of these things that you don't want these are the things they have and that's what, they have been, that's what they gave you so forgive them don't hold them don't hold this against them because if you do you are also tied down yourself so and you start telling yourself God is my father my father lost me my father lost me so start speaking this over your life my father lost me don't wait for some feelings okay I want to feel this no forget about feelings 
Just keep speaking it. My father loves me. I believe in the father's love for me. I'm accepted unconditionally by my father. I don't care who, who rejects me, who doesn't want to see me, but I'm so happy that my father loves me. So but with this, you get you start feeling that's that love of the father. No more fear of being rejected. You know, fear of rejection is another deadly thing. There are people who just live in fear of rejection. We might we have to deal with that uh, when we when we start looking at the signs of uh, rejection. That will probably be our next uh, our next uh, discussion, which will be on Monday, God's willing. Looking at the signs of rejection. What are the signs? How do I know that I that I'm going I'm suffering from rejection? I'm going to rejection. There are signs. There are visible signs. And uh, my book, I'm trusting the Lord. I'll get it get it to Amazon very soon. What I'm sharing with you now is in my book, Journey to the Father. Rejection. Dealing with rejection signs of rejection and how to overcome rejection we are going to save this uh, we are going to save nations we have what it takes the father has given us what it takes the solution united nations cannot do it but the church we have what it takes thank god for the end time army we are coming in the name of the lord to ten nations this is your problem let's return to the source the father is the source Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for giving us the opportunity to fellowship uh, this moment. We are sincerely grateful to you for our ears you have opened to hear your hearts and our hearts you have opened to receive from you. Mighty Father, wonderful Father, righteous Father, let this world become a life in us. Let uh, what we have heard become life in us. Sweet Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you, the teacher. We thank you, the strengthener. Do your work in us. Let no one of us be tormented by rejection or the spirit of rejection again. Let everyone be free totally from rejection. Rejection by parents, rejection by, by, by the society, rejection by the church, rejection by a pastor, rejection in whatever form. Tonight I proclaim by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from rejection because God is your Father. The Father has not rejected you. The Father will not reject you because He loves you. The sacrifice of Jesus Christ is more than enough for you. Just for only you. So the Father has no provision to reject you. The, the church in the wilderness is behind. This is the true church. This is the real church. And the church that is bought with a price. Bought by the blood of Jesus. Thank you for being part of the brokers. The part of the fellowship. I look forward to seeing you by the grace of God on Monday. Bye-bye.